Hi everybody, how are you doing? This is Mr. Dallas. On this particular video, um, uh, we're going to discuss the notes for lesson 5.3, 5.5, and 5.6. So those three lessons can be condensed down to this one page of notes here. So it's really important that we pay attention because you're going to learn um, you're going to learn a lot here. Um, so this lesson's about proving triangles are congruent. It says proving tri triangle congruency. Um, the whole goal of this particular lesson is to show you there's five different ways to prove that um, triangles are congruent um, just by looking at, at partial information. So, um, so, so the five things we have, we have side, side, side. So if we look at just um, the sides, we can tell if, if um, two triangles are congruent. Um, we can look at uh, a couple sets of sides and one set of angles to prove triangles are congruent. We can look at two angles and one set of sides. So there's actually two of them that have two angles and a side. So these are the ones that people get confused the most. And then there's another way using a right triangle, if you look at a hypotenuse and a leg, that you can prove triangles are congruent. And we're going to go over all this in more detail. But ultimately, if you look at this in the grand scheme of things, um, the whole point of this lesson, I'm going to go over this here, is it says to prove, the point of this lesson is to prove that two triangles are congruent using relationships between angles and, and sides. And it says you must have a combination of three corresponding angles and sides to prove two triangles are congruent. And it can't just be any combination. There's these five ways, and if you uh, understand these notes and pay attention to these notes, you'll have a much better understanding. But it has to be a certain, um, a certain situation for these triangles to be proved congruent to each other. So I'm just going to kind of jump into this. So looking at the side, side, side one, um, I'm going to mark, make some markings here. I'm going to say that AB is, is congruent to, to XY. And by the way, if you want to get any markers out from the bins, um, that are on your desks, you're welcome to get those out. Uh, and if the sub wants to pause these at any, uh, the video at any time to let students catch up, then, then feel free to do that or rewind it, whatever you need to do. Um, but we, I'm going to mark these two sides congruent to each other. Uh, I'm also going to mark side BC and, and YZ congruent to each other. Uh, and then lastly, I'm going to assume that, um, uh, that AC, side AC is congruent to side XZ. So notice here we're focusing on the sides because I'm putting tick marks on the sides. So this side corresponds to this side. This side corresponds to this side. And this side corresponds to this one. So since we have three sets of sides that are co congruent to each other and that correspond to each other, I can assume that these two triangles are congruent by the side, side, side postulate. And I'm actually going to write down a congruency statement. It's very similar to similarity. Um, like the last unit we did, but these triangles are identical. The angles are the same, the side lengths are, con are the same. So uh, I'm going to say congruent here and not similar. So I can say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle XYZ by the side, side, side postulate. And that's kind of what your answer would be. A lot of times we're just going to put side, side, side. But every once in a while, you're going to have to worry about the, um, the congruency statement. And it's important, though, th this is in a certain order. Uh, a and X correspond to each other because they're, um, this angle A is between the side with the one tick mark and the three tick marks. X is between the side with the one tick mark and three tick marks. So these angles actually correspond to each other. Same thing with B. B is between the, one, the side with the one tick mark and two tick marks. So this angle corresponds to Y because it's in the same orientation. And then C is between... The, um, the, the side with the three tick marks and the two tick marks, just like uh, si uh, angle Z is between um, the side of the three tick marks and two tick marks. So this congruency statement, it can't just be A, B, C, and then three random letters here. The A corresponds to the X, those both come first. The B corresponds with the Y, those both come second. C corresponds with the Z because those both come third. Um, they, they both come third here. So it, there's a lot of information here that these have to be organized properly. But again, if you can prove that all the sides match another set of sides and they're congruent to each other, then you can say the triangles are congruent by the side, side, side postulate. Moving down, we have the side angle side postulate. So um, this one's unique here. Uh, notice how the A is between the two S's. That is, is on purpose. And you're going to see, I'm going to label sides and angles that are congruent here. And you're going to see that it's actually going to spell out side angle side. But it says here it has an included angle. Uh, and so let me mark the sides that I'm going to make congruent. Let's say um, DE is congruent to MN. Uh, let's say also that uh, EF, side EF is congruent to side uh, NO. The included angle 
is the angle that's between the two sides that we're actually checking for congruency. So if I look at this side, D, and this side, uh, sorry, DE and, and side EF, these are both connecting at E, so this is my included angle. So since the angle that we're checking is between um, the two sides we are marked congruent, then this is the included angle. And so the included angle over here is this angle that's touching both side MN and NO. So that is also my included angle. So if we had a triangle and the angle that was congruent was not E or N, so let me kind of cover those up. Instead it was, let's say, um, D and M. Notice how D and M, these angles are not between the two sides we're checking for congruency. So you cannot say side angle side. Uh, and let me actually just kind of make it a little bit more obvious. So this side corresponds to this side. This side down here corresponds to this side. But the angle that's congruent is between those two sides and it literally spells out side angle side. So the, the quickest way around from this side to this side uh, there's an angle between it that's congruent. So it actually spells out side angle side for you. So I'm going to write down the congruency statement here. I'm going to say triangle DEF is congruent to triangle, well D corresponds with M because these triangles are in the same orientation. E and N are the same angle because they've been marked congruent. Uh, and then F and O are, uh, oops, I should put O there, um, are congruent, so those both come third. So if you had a triangle where we had two sets of sides that were congruent and the angle in between those sides is congruent, we can assume that these are congruent using the side angle side postulate. So just something to think about. Now the next one, the angle side angle, um, it has something that's a, similar to the last one but a little bit different. We're now going to focus on what we call an included side, which is something we haven't talked about before. We've talked about included angles in the last unit, uh, but included side is similar to included angle, except for we're kind of doing everything in reverse. So notice how the side here is between the two angles. That's the idea behind an included side. So let's say I were to mark uh, angle K congruent to S. Uh, let's also say that I mark angle L congruent to angle T. Well, what's the side directly between those two sets of congruent angles? Uh, well, that would be a side KL here and over here to be side ST. So these are included sides. So the included sides here are the two sides that are um, between the two angles that we mark congruent. So again, the idea is just whichever angles we have marked congruent, if the side is marked congruent in between them, then um, that's an included side. And this is another situation where if you just mark the angles that are congruent to each other, so that angle matches that angle, this angle matches this angle, and then this side matches this side. It literally spells out angle, side, angle. So I could say that these two triangles are congruent using the angle, side, angle postulate. So I'm going to go with triangle, let's go with JKL. It's congruent to triangle, well, J corresponds with R. Uh, K and S match up because they're both congruent. Uh, and then L corresponds with T. And I could say by the angle side angle postulate if you want to. Uh, so that's three of them. So we've done side side side, we've done side angle side, and we've done angle side angle. Uh, let's do the last two here. Now this one is um, the angle angle side one is very similar to the previous one in that it has two angles and a side we're going to compare. You know, two angles and a side. But notice how on, on the uh, included, sorry, this angle side angle one, we have an included side, this side's between the two angles. That's not gonna be the case on the angle angle side. So if I look at this one here, uh, I'm gonna mark um, angle B congruent to angle Y. I'm also gonna mark angle C congruent to angle Z. Uh, and then if I were to mark side AB congruent to side XY, Notice how the, the sides that are congruent here are not between the two angles that are marked congruent. Uh, and so that's the same idea, right? So the side is not between the two angles that's, that are marked congruent. So if I were to spell things out here with a side and a side, um, this angle corresponds with this angle, this angle corresponds with this angle. But again, notice the side that's, not, that's congruent is not between the two angles. So it's kind of an opposite in this example here but we get an SAA, or if you flip it, we get an angle, angle side. 
So don't put side angle angle um, because there's an angle angle side postulate. Um, if you ever get this, just kind of flip it over. Uh, and again, same thing right here. Notice how the side is not between the two angles. So since these both match up, I can say that um, these are congruent by the angle angle postulate. And I would say something like triangle, let's say ABC again, is congruent congruent to triangle, um, let's see here. So A corresponds with X, uh, B and Y go with each other, and then C and Z go third. Uh, and so hopefully that makes sense. If not, we're going to do a couple practice problems after this, and hopefully you'll get the, the general idea. Uh, and then the last one is the hypotenuse leg one. Now, hypotenuse leg, those are actually two sides. Uh, but a hypotenuse leg is only for right triangles, and so that gets us an angle here. So this only works for right triangles. And so I have a right triangle here because both of these angles are right angles. So I immediately know that these angles are congruent. Uh, and then when I say hypotenuse, the hypotenuse is the side that's opposite the right angle. Uh, it's also um, the longest side on a right triangle. So I'm going to mark this as an H and this is an H. Uh, and then a leg is just one of the other sides of the triangle. So a right triangle has hypotenuse and it has two legs. So I have a leg here and I have a leg here. So any right triangle, if you want to do this, you don't have to. So opposite the right triangle is the hypotenuse. And then the other sides are called legs. So we have two legs. So in this case here, let's me just mark, um, let's say GF congruent to side uh, UV. And from here, um, we have enough information to prove that these triangles are congruent. And we don't actually mark H's here. I'm not sure why I did that. I actually you just mark tick marks. So I'm labeling the hypotenuse, and that's what I was trying to do. But if you know the hypotenuses are congruent to each other, and you know one of the legs matches another leg on the other triangle, uh, and you happen to have a right triangle, then you can assume that these triangles are congruent by the hypotenuse leg theorem. So again, we have right triangles. Um, the hypotenuses are congruent to each other. The legs are congruent to each other. So we can say that these are congruent by the hypotenuse leg theorem. So I could say triangle GFH uh, is congruent to triangle, well, G matches U, F matches V, and then H matches the W. And that's how you would prove that these two triangles are similar. Uh, and I'm going to show you example problems after this. Um, uh, but beyond that, um, we'll talk about why it's called hypotenuse leg maybe in class. I'm not going to put that in a video, though. It's kind of silly, though. But hopefully this makes sense. Um, and again, if you have, have any questions, you can ask the sub to rewind this. Um, I have another video going over this kind of stuff as well on Google Classroom if you want to go over that. Um, but beyond that, I'm going to stop this video, and I'm going to do another video going over some practice problems. So have a good day. Bye.